So today we're going to look at a couple of online tools that you can use to create portions of your project. I'm going to begin by going to a Google Doc and one quick way to do that is just to type docs.google.com and you can open up a Google Doc. Inside the Google Doc uh, you may choose to put your uh, graphics and your text. So I'm going to show you two ways that you can create equations and graphs and put them into your Google Doc. So if you want to make an equation of any kind, of course, one option and probably the simplest option is to use the equation editor that's already inside of Google Docs. There's a little button here that says insert. And if you go down to here, you'll notice it says equation. And so in here I can type an equation. Let's say I want to type an equation that is in vertex form. So I could put a 2 in the front and x plus or minus some number inside the parentheses. I do need an exponent here. So if you'll go back to your toolbar, which is now here on your in your Google Docs, you can go across here to see the exponent here. And then when you put your exponent, it didn't work. Let me try that again. Yeah, you got to go to the right once to get that exponent once you do that. I didn't do that. All right, so there's the two. And then you need to put some number out here, like plus one, minus three, something like that. So this is how you can make an equation. Now, if you do decide to make one in Google Docs, the default size is really small. It's only 11, and it's Arial. It's not Arial inside the equation, though, so you can change uh, this size. If you change the font, it's not going to affect this equation. But I'm going to make this much bigger, so now I can really see it. So again, one option for writing equations in your Google Doc is just to use the editor inside Doc. The other is to make a graph. Now there is no editor inside Doc that will make graphs. So the easiest way to make a graph is to go into Google, uh, I mean go into Desmos. So I'm going to go to desmos.com and when I get there I'm going to start graphing. And to create the equation, you simply type the equation into the calculator. So I'm going to do y equals, and I'll make up something else, x plus 3 times x plus 2. So there's my equation. The beauty of this is in your equation, you'll notice it has all these really important points. So in part of your assignment, you're asked to identify the zeros. You're asked to identify the y-intercepts. You're asked to identify the vertex. Uh, well, if you do this, you can actually do that pretty easily because you can label those. You may want to zoom in to make your graph as big as possible. So I'm going to zoom way in. And using this little plus or minus, or if you have a mouse, you can actually just use the wheel of your mouse. If you'll do that, then these will be spread out a little better. Of course, my y-intercept's not showing now, so that's not so good. I definitely want to see that, so let's try this again. There's my y-intercept. And I've got some x-intercepts, and then I've got a vertex. All right, so now if you'll click on, if you're on a desktop, you'll have the option to share this out. If you're not on a desktop, but you're on a phone, then your phone has a way to capture what's on your screen. So I would advise you to go to Google and just type in screen capture Android or screen capture iPhone, and they will tell you the keystrokes that you need to do to capture what is on your screen. And then you can just insert that picture into your Google Doc on your phone. Uh, if you're on the desktop or a laptop or a Chromebook, you'll have this little share button. And so that's the quickest way if you're on one of those devices to share. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to export image. Now since I'm on, uh, so it didn't keep my little labels, but if you go to medium, let's see if any of these are good. Oh, these are not so good. Let's go to... Uh, yeah, these are all kind of blurry down here. I've never seen these. Just thought I'd look at them. There's the large rectangle, the medium rectangle. That one looks great. You can go to thick or thin. 
uh, but you can download that PNG and put it onto your document. Now, unfortunately, the little numbers are not saved, so you'll have to create those yourself, and I'll show you a way to do that. So I'm going to download this PNG, and when I do that, it's producing a graph on my computer. So when I go back to my document, I can insert an image, and it'll say upload from your computer. Now, I have the graph here in my document that I've created at Desmos, but it's really kind of big. So I would probably want to spend some time making this a little bit smaller. Something else you can do with this graph that will give you much more flexibility is to insert a Google drawing. So I'm going to go down here and delete this graph. And I'm going to go to insert drawing and it'll say new. So I'm going to create a brand new one. When I do that, it opens up this workspace. And one of the options is to insert an image. So I'm going to use the exact same downloaded file that I just created. So I'm going to choose that Desmos graph that I created. And it's going to put that Desmos graph inside of this drawing. And what's awesome is now I have all these extra tools to use to create labels for my graph. So let's say I want to label this y-intercept. There's a text box here. I can create the text box wherever I want. So I could say y-intercept. And maybe I want to say what it is. It looks like it's 0, 6. So I'm going to put 0, 6, and I'm going to type that in here. Now, I don't have an equation editor right here. It's just for text mainly. So it's actually better if you can get all the equation stuff in the graph as much as possible before you put it in here. There are workarounds. I will show you some more things later this week. But for now, what we know we could do, pretty much all we can do is put labels with text box. So this looks pretty good. The y-intercept is 0, 6. And so I can come down here and make a text box to label my x-intercepts. This looks like negative 3, 0 and negative 2, 0. And now the vertex, I don't remember what that was. You would probably need to go back to your Desmos to get your points. But you can label your vertex as well. So these are things you can do inside of a Google drawing. Now once you're happy with your drawing, you're going to go back up and you're going to save Oops, sorry guys. First you're going to go back up to the top and you're going to save your drawing into your, uh, it'll say save and close. So I'm going to click on save and close and it's going to close that out uh, and basically place it inside of your document. Now you see it says y-intercept right there. So what I'm saying is you can increase, you can include labels in your graphs by using the drawing tool. There are many more tools that we can use, but the main tool we can use for graphing, remember, is Desmos. So I would encourage you to use the, the equation editor and use the Desmos grapher to create your graphs.